All right, now we're going to go back and revisit the topic of projectile motion. Remember, if I have some sort of projectile that begins here and moves through a ballistic path to here, I'm going to have time t equals zero, x is zero because it hasn't gone horizontally, y is zero because it hasn't gone vertically, but then as it moves, its x and its y change as the time moves. So at this point, you have positive time, positive x, and a positive y. Moving on through, we still have positive x, positive t, but our y is approaching zero. This is our basic ballistic graph. Now, we have a couple things that we're going to need to use. It's parametric because we're going to use two equations, these two equations right here, to represent the motion in x and the motion in y. So we have an entirely separate equation for this motion, x equals t times v sub zero cosine theta. Now v sub zero is the initial velocity, the velocity at time zero. t is our variable time, theta is the angle at which it's launched. Now we're also going to have a vertical component and that vertical component is going to be y equals t v sub zero sine theta dot 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 dot. All of this equation goes right there. So we have the vertical component that we have to deal with, and we have the horizontal component that we have to deal with, and it all varies with respect to time. Now, if I go and take a look at a problem such as this, this actually is an example from your book, and we have Kaylee's practicing free throws for an upcoming basketball game. She releases the ball with an initial velocity of 24 feet per second at an angle of 53 degrees. So we have our 53 degrees and our initial velocity 24 feet per second. The, hor uh, the horizontal distance from the free throw line to the rim of the basket is 13 feet. The vertical distance from the floor to the rim is 10 feet. The front of the rim is 2 feet from the backboard. She releases the shot at 4.75 feet above the ground. Does Kaylee make the basket? The question becomes, at some time, do we have an x that is equal to 13 feet, I guess technically greater than 13 feet, while y is going to be 10 feet? So do we have this point of intersection between the path of the ball and the height of the rim. That's the intersection point that we're going to be looking for. To determine whether she makes a shot, you need the horizontal distance of the ball that's traveled. The height of the ball is 10 feet. First, write parametric equations for the vertical position of the ball. Okay, so first things first. At time zero, we have an initial velocity of 24, and that is feet per second. We have an angle of 53 degrees. So we have 24 here, 53 here, y equals t times 24 again, 53 again, minus 1 half, 32 t squared. Now, the 32 is actually the force of gravity pulling down. And in fact, if you're in physics, this should look very, very familiar. This, the 4.75, is the initial height. So, for example, in our case, she let it go at 4.75 feet. So we have gravity, height, theta, initial velocity. By the time we plug it all in, we get these two equations. Now, we could solve this equation just like our previous ones, and we could say um, t equals, and we could solve this for t, plug in all the x's, and begin solving. That's not too bad. We could do it. It would be quadratic because you'd have this and this, and the question is, well, what is y? Well, y has to equal, remember, 10 feet. So you could solve this using the quadratic formula. However, we probably want to use some technology to solve this. What I've done is I, again, have gone to mode, made it in parametric, made sure we're in degree because we have 53 degrees, then went to y equals, put all of the top equation, t, move this over here slightly, uh, t times 24 cosine 53, then I have t times 24 sine 53 minus 1 half times 32 t squared plus 4.75. Uh, this over here, all it is is a straight line through 10 to see 
is it going to reach the 10 feet of height? And the answer is, here's our graph. We have the shot released here, moves up, and you'll notice it moves through the 10-foot mark once. By moving through the 10-foot mark once, that's fine, but that would, in essence, hit the bottom of the rim. We needed to come back down through the top, so it goes through, and we're looking for this piece right there. That's the one that we're interested in. So where does 10 intersect and we're looking for that second interaction. So, what we can simply do is go to second calc. I'm sorry. Okay, small technical difficulty. When you go to here, second calc on your 8384 pluses, the actual calculator, you should find a choice for intersect. You simply choose which of two equations you're talking about and a guess in the middle. We can do this in class. In this case, because I have the online emulator, the best I can do is trace it by moving it back and forth, figuring out where does it cross. Well, I have 0.7 is on top. 0.8 is on bottom, so somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. The answer actually is at 0.77. Now, the question becomes, when it reaches, when it reaches its crux at at least 10 high, so for example 10.1, is it far enough to have reached the basket horizontally. The question is, when it comes back through, is it going to come back through before, on target, or too far? And since this is 13 feet, we come in at approximately 10.3. By the time we get to 13 here, we're already too low. So no, she does not make the shot. She does not make the shot. So it takes approximately 0.77 seconds to reach the basket, but in this case it wasn't enough energy, wasn't the right angle, did not reach the basket because 10.3 is not equal to 13 in the x direction. We'll talk a little bit more about this in class, but this way you can see these two formulas being used using some technology, and also everything in context. All right. Thank you.